In this video, we're going to take a look at price, elasticity of supply, and how you graph it when it's elastic and inelastic. I want to draw your attention to elastic supply on the left, and we're going to take a look at this first. I've set up price and quantity on the x and y axis, and I've put the value of PES as greater than 1, because when that's the case, it is elastic, and as you can see, my supply curve is elastic. Now what that means is when there is an increase in demand, so our initial starting point is P star, Q star, and then there's a sudden increase in demand, that increase in demand can be met with a relatively small change in price. And when I say relatively, that's in comparison to the change in quantity. So you can see this distance from Q star to Q1 is bigger than the change from P star to P1. So when supply is elastic, quantity can be increased with a relatively small change in price. However, when dealing with inelastic supply, and that value would be when PES is less than 1, we have a relatively vertical supply curve. So this is steeper than the elastic supply curve. And what you'll see happen here is when demand increases for a product that has relatively inelastic supply, the change in quantity results in a more than proportional change in price. What that means is that this percent change in quantity is going to be smaller than the percent change in price. So price goes up quite a bit, although quantity doesn't go up at the same rate. So that's the key difference between elastic and inelastic supply. Whenever you're taking a look at these two graphs, it's important that you do a couple of things. Your starting point should always be to lay down your price and quantity axes on y and x, put in your supply curve and pay attention to the problem, whether it's asking you for elastic or inelastic supply. Then draw in your demand curve and set P star and Q star. And when anything moves, I always insist that students draw arrows, whether that's price increasing to P1, quantity going from Q star to Q1, or the demand curve shifting. Right? This ensures that when the examiner takes a look at your problem, they can identify what change you've made very clearly. So you'll see our final result is a price of P1 and an increase in quantity supplied of Q1. And as you graph these diagrams, again, take care to make sure how you draw in your supply curves and be careful how you draw in changes. I'll see you in the next one.